Hi, this is David Dowdy. I own your local local training and business education, biggest business coaching firm, Action Coach Lake Norman. And I'm excited to have Isabel Baker on with us today as a focus of the Business Spotlight series. And um, Isabel, why don't you introduce yourself, introduce your company, and tell us a little bit about the services that you provide. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Absolutely. Uh, so my name is Isabel Baker, and I'm the owner of Pure Commercial Cleaning, which is a local janitorial cleaning company here in Charlotte, North Carolina. So we service anywhere from a 40-mile radius from York, South Carolina to Lake Norman, Huntersville area, maybe Mooresville, North Carolina. And we focus on cleaning large facilities. So the best way I tell people to think of it is think of anything that is high traffic and going to need cleaning, maybe five, six, four, five, six, or seven days a week. So daily cleaning, nightly cleaning. We do a lot of car dealerships. We do a lot of you know large offices, schools, daycares, churches, anything that has high traffic. So that is a little bit about our company. Totally That's... women women operated, which is awesome. Congratulations! Now, how long have you been in business? About two years. Wow. Yep. Very good. So surely um, there's been a lot of learnings. If you had to go back and start all over again. What would you do differently, knowing what you knew now, uh, you know, after only two years? Yes. What would you do differently? That's a cool question. Honestly, you know, think, I always think back to that. And I am not 20 years into something. I'm not 40 years into something. So when I look back at what I have done, there's nothing I would do different. Truly, because the hardships and the lessons are what made us be able to adapt. So if we wouldn't have gone through those problems, I wouldn't have known how to solve it and not have them happen in the future. Um, you know, there's, we have not had any big problems, you know, we're not bankrupt. We haven't had any big liability lawsuits or anything. So there's right. nothing I would go back and, and change um, to prevent a different outcome. I love what I've learned from the outcomes we've had. Yeah. It's all part of the journey, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So going in, you wouldn't change anything, but you have learned a few things, I trust. Um, sometimes the, the easy way, sometimes the hard way, I would imagine. What are what are a couple of the big things that stand out for you as, as learnings now that you're a couple of years in? Absolutely. So I think one of the best lessons and one of the coolest lessons is when you decide to do an entrepreneurial journey, you know what you're signing up for and it's never a million dollars tomorrow. So my biggest lesson that I've learned to love is the journey. Enjoy the journey and embrace uncertainty in that. So, you know, have a plan for the ups and downs, but then just embrace it, you know, long car rides to meetings, whatever it is, training employees, having to fire employees, having to, you know, deal with upset clients, learning to love those moments and be like, okay, this is awesome. How can we adapt and make this situation better? And learning like, this is my job. This is what I do and learning to love it. The journey, because the ups, like if you focus on only the ups, you're in for a bumpy ride <laughs> as a big, you know what I'm saying? But if you can, obviously the ups will be good, but if you can learn to love the downs and the whole journey, then that's what I've learned. That's awesome. You, you've got that um, optimistic spirit about all of it. So going into business, um, there's some misconceptions that the marketplace has, that people have all the time about wh what it's like to really own a business and perhaps just how glorious it can be. So what, what are a few of those misconception, misconceptions that you're aware of and have you seen it play out or how do you address those? Yeah, so, so far what I've seen in, you know, I network with a lot of business owners, a lot of cleaning company owners, as well as other business owners mm -hmm. anywhere from, you know, 70 years in the industry to like, you know, none. And one of the biggest things that I notice in people with younger businesses is the misconception that you need to actually do the physical work yourself for a while before delegating it out. And I think that's really a misconception because I think the whole goal of owning a company when you have the vision of scaling is to hire out people who do the job better than you. So of course you have to have the experience and the, the you know, hands-on in the industry, but hire out people, hire out people who are better you than you, share the vision with them. That's a misconception I've seen, at least in the trades. It, it's applicable, you know, I think when you get maybe into lawyer and doctor and stuff where you need to know, it's a little bit different. But, and then a second thing, misconception that I've noticed is that 
owning a business is super hard. It's like, okay, of course it's hard, but if you decided to do the journey, you should know what you're getting yourself into. And I think if you are able to pivot, if you're able to adapt, adjust, and foresee the worst outcome, then you can you can prepare for it. And it's never think, if you can ad- prepare for it, nothing is gonna catch you by surprise and be that hard. You know, I mean, obviously there's always hards, there's recessions, there's lawsuits, there's things that happen, but if you can foresee them and kind of have a plan of action when that time comes, then. And it's interesting, the two points that you brought out, one was you don't have to do it yourself. And then, you know, in in order to be successful, but then also do some planning and preparation. You know, oftentimes the small business owners that you may have come across is they're so deep in the weeds doing the work of the business. There is no time to plan. Absolutely. And then that's what exactly when things will happen to them. And they're like, this is so hard running a business because they're constantly behind and they're never proactive. They're always reactive because they're in it. You have to work on the business. And the only way to work on the business is to delegate out the tasks that can be delegated out. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. The the job of employees is to respond and react. Whereas the owners are the only ones that can really do that longer term planning and preparation. And I think those are the people that oftentimes end up saying business is so hard. You know, I can't control Mm -hmm. it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So why do you think it's hard? Why do they see it as hard? It doesn't. Truly, I think one of the things is probably being reactive when things come mm-hmm. your way. You know, we're always going to have things though that come our way that are difficult. But I think it also it goes back to the journey thing. Like a lot of people, you know, might have, and I don't know, because I, I don't know people's mentalities, but might have the mindset of wins, wins, wins. And so when negatives happen and accumulative negatives happen, it gets overwhelming as human nature gets overwhelming. So I think having an optimistic attitude and and a plan almost, you know, sometimes I just have an almost naive optimistic attitude. Like it's going to be okay. Even if it's really not in the moment, I'm going to do my best, really resolve this issue for the best interest of all parties and then move on. And another one comes, okay, well, we're going to get better. We're going to, you know, I I heard uh, a presentation the other day and the gentleman was a nuclear engineer and, you know, and it, it was, everybody's reaction is like, oh my gosh, you're dealing with nuclear waste. He said, it's everybody's scared of it. It's really not scary. It's not scary at all. What's scary are things that you don't understand. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and because of his training, he understood exactly what it was. And so it became less scary for him. And same for business owners, I think. Those things, the planning and, and preparation and all that is things that they haven't been trained to do many times. And so it's scary for them. With right. the preparation and education, you get there. So you've had a really good run at it over the few years. And in, in talking with you, I hear scaling is is on your mind. Mm-hmm. Um, so the growth that you've had, what do you attribute that to? When I think back, I think the biggest thing would be not being afraid to fail. I think that has caused me to learn some hard lessons pretty fast, but it's also brought more growth than I ever could have had with being conservative and cautious. Uh, And not to say I always do plan. So I always think worst case scenario, I always have a mental backup in my mind. Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid to fail. I'm not afraid to leap when I don't know something, you know, as long as I have a network of people who know it, who have taught me who I can reach out to, you know, sometimes you just never know until you try. So sometimes you'll fail. Sometimes it'll be good. Well, yeah um yeah that's that's gold right there and I, I see your energy I hear your energy and so I, I've got to ask about that the business life the personal life oftentimes for small business owners those become intertwined sometimes it's just overwhelming all around how do you how do you deal with that do you recognize it do you pay attention to it and how do you work through it to keep keep things in keep sane in this whole process Totally, totally. Well, cool question. You know, I think I have such an advantage because I don't have kids. I'm not married. I don't have another job. I don't even have a dog. So it's like, I don't have anything that does bog a lot of other people down. Like truly, I see these moms do, you know, companies and I think, how do you do it? Like, kudos to you. I can never do it. I can never speak from your point of experience because that's 
crazy. So that's a huge advantage to me. But second, I would say I have a very open schedule because I delegate. I think that has saved me. Well, I mean, yeah, like I can't imagine if I were to take on the work of my employees, I, I it's physically impossible, but I delegate really well, make sure they're constantly taken care of. Hey, let's go out to lunch. Hey, do you have enough of this? Do you have enough time? Are you rested? Taking care of my employees so that they do excellent. And then I have all the time in the world to do whatever I want. And then, you know, delegating out things like just de delegating, like social mm -hmm. media, sit down one day out of the month and crank out the whole month of social media. So then I'm not doing that rest of the month. Stuff like that. So delegating my time really well so that I have, again, proactive versus reactive. That's how I always think. So I'd rather have everything done and then I can react to things that come along the way. Sounds like you've got a lot of discipline and organization in your life to keep that balance. So I guess that's a good way to put it. Yeah. 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 Well, good. So you mentioned a couple of times a delegation and you've got your team doing the work. So talk to me a little bit about what it, how do you go about looking for hiring employees? What are the, some of the characteristics, you know, that really work for you that you seek out? And then how do you nurture that, cultivate it, maintain it ongoing? Yeah, cool question. So I think um, when I think of our company, you know, we have core values and I tend to hire employees based on those core values. So I want them to align with our company vision, our company value, what we stand for and what we won't stand for. And so I do have a very happy attitude. I love happiness in life. I think that's the secret to living longer. I think it's better to be naively happy than to be pessimistic. And so I, I do try to hire people who are going to have a good attitude. You know, I can't work with people who don't have a good attitude. So I, I look for hardworking people, people who love to work, people who have a happy attitude and outlook on life. They like to have fun. And I do try to attract very strong believers to Christ. I'm not going to send away an employee because they don't, but mm -hmm. it is cool to see, you know, oh, wow, we're kind of all believers. So the company core values are be friendly, have fun and go above and beyond. So if I find an employee who is eager to work hard and go above and beyond, they're given responsibilities, great asset to the team. If they're not looking to go above and beyond and they're kind of one of those, nope, this is what you hired me for, probably not going to be a good fit for our company. So hmm. that's what I look for in employees is someone who's happy, wants to have fun and wants to go above and beyond, enjoys their work. That's, uh, that's great. I mean, the attitude is so... Yeah, are there are there certain questions that you might ask or you know how do you observe that in a way that helps reveal the the attitude or the the positive nature that you're actually looking for yeah, people really would say they're positive but what's the evidence that you see in your absolutely mind? really good question so in the cleaning in our cleaning company what we do in the hiring process yes we do interviews and we do you know pre-work stuff to kind of qualify them, see them, you know, are they showing up on time? Are they wanting to do these questions? So that's step one, but that doesn't say anything about their work ethic because they could lie. Yeah. So then step two is we do a working interview. So we do about a week of a working interview and they're paid during it, but it's a week. We don't sign any papers. We're not signing documents. We're not onboarding you yet. You're working for us. We're testing you out both ways. If this is too much for you, let us know and you you don't have to work for us. No harm, no foul. And if you're not a great fit for our company, then we're probably going to part ways at the end. So we do that week, week working interview. And so my team will train them. And then my team will report back to me. Oh my gosh, I love working with her. She totally fits the company culture. She's happy. She's hardworking. She's already doing above and beyond projects. Boom. Or, you know, I'll get, Hey, I don't know if she's a great fit from my leads or sorry, my um, yeah team leads. They'll be like, mm -hmm. Oh, she's you know, kind of on her phone the whole time. Not really happy, not eager. And so it's probably not a great fit, you know? So the working interview is huge because we're able to see on both ends physically, if it's a good fit. Perfect. Thank you for sharing that. So as we, as we start to wind down a little bit, um, as you, as we look at other entrepreneurs, emerging business owners that are coming out or even already in business, some final words of wisdom or thoughts that you might share based on your own experiences. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so when I talk with a lot of people, friends who want to start their own businesses, um, one of the things that I find a lot is they'll have a wonderful plan executed. They'll have 
all these bits and pieces in play. They have the passion for it. They're excited, but they just, they always come up with one more reason as to why they don't want to actually start it. So my biggest advice would be just go for it. You know, if you, now there are downsides to that. If you have like a brick and mortar, or if you have a ton of capital you're waiting to do, I, I would put more thought into it. But if you have something that doesn't, you know, have a ton of startup capital, then just go for it. Test it out. See, you know, or as Nike says, just do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Test it out. See, you know, and then you'll learn along the way. That's when you'll learn. You'll be like, oh, this is doing great. This is not doing good. And then you pivot and adjust, just like we said. So you never, yeah, but go for it. You have to go for it. Just go for it. All right, Isabel, if somebody wants to reach out to you or, or learn more about your company, what's the best way to, to uh, find you? Absolutely. So our company is Pure Commercial Cleaning. So you can Google us, look at our reviews. Website is the same, purecommercialcleaning.com. You can um, call us 949-558-7617 or email us, office at purecommercialcleaning.com. Fantastic. Isabel Baker with Pure Commercial Cleaning. Thanks so much for being on uh, the Business Spotlight Series today and for sharing for sharing your experiences and your wisdom. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me so much. It was fun. All right. Have a great day.